Check, 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 check. You sound like a chalk. I know, that's what I was trying to do. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Happy Friday again. Happy Friday again. Yeah. Oh, you're only happy she get the next couple I'm of always, days sleeping. I'm always happy on Friday. It's <laughs> favourite day of the week. I can make you unhappy. Oh. We can do bass on Fridays. No, we cannot. No, Friday's my happy day. Please don't take it away from me. <laughs> Actually, Saturday's my favourite day because I get to sleep in and I know I can get to sleep in the following day. Oh, so you're happy she, you know you got double sleep in. Yeah, it's oh, my Saturday well. rules. Your Saturday rules. Yeah. And how was playing with the childs? Oh, no, that was the weekend before, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Oh. Yeah. So you had, that's right, you just slept all weekend. Yeah, what did I do? No, I went to Anna's with a Russian barbecue. I know. All right, so you slept all that weekend and partied one night. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't do much. I didn't. I had a lazy weekend. It was good, though. I like having lazy weekends every now and then. Lazy weekends. Yeah. Well, it's nice. Like, I don't need to go out and do stuff all the time and... You save money as well, so for my island. Your island. I had busy <laughs> weekends. I I edited your video. Yes. And put music together and learned stuff. Did cool. lots of learning of stuff that I thought I already knew how to do, but then found like, better ways. You can always learn more. Always learning. Yeah, I, it's actually yeah, and I'm, I I don't like change, like finding a new program and things like that, and. Just on that, remember, I, this is something I've got to bring up because I find it really funny. Just in the last couple of, oh, last week or so, I've noticed a lot of people putting up um, YouTube saying, um, I don't know why, but I finally f- switched programs. Mm-hmm. And it was just like three main programs for video, video editing, I was switching from one to another. And I was sort of like, hmm, this is weird. It's sort of like- It's like a sudden the, change. No, like I'm, all three programs are good. All of them got their things. There's one of the programs I can't stand, but it's just me thing. Yeah. Um, but I noticed that so there was somebody using this program, someone using this, and they were all switching. Mm-hmm. Like they've now seen the light and they're switching to this program and don't know why they've never done it before. And then I got an email on the weekend oh, from a particular them. company asking saying, you to use it, yeah. would you use our program? And as long as you can put 60 seconds in there and mention how much better this is than the other programs out there. And I thought, mm. oh my God, all I wonder why. how much they're, they're yeah. paying for this. But yeah, I. But you, you're not going to, because it's like we said, I think previously in a podcast that if you don't believe in a program, like you're not going to use it. Oh, look, it's a, no, it's, it's a very good program. But it's not how you work. It's if I was doing more cinematography oh, stuff, yeah, then 100%. Um, maybe I'll have a look, a play with it a little bit more with um, some of the music video stuff that, like, just the, the models moving and put music to it and yeah. things like that. But I do find if you know a program, you have an idea, you can just do it. When you don't know a program, you have a creative idea, you've got to find out how to do that. By the time you've worked out how to do it, you've lost that. The creativeness. The creativeness yeah. about and your flow. Mm. So I sort of carefully looked at a couple of other YouTubes just on it and I just thought, yeah, I know this is super high end and they can do the, all these things, but the learning curve I'm going to have to go through, I reckon, even though the guy said it, it, he got it down from a double the time it normally took him in one program to this program, he's now got it down it to taken so 20%. Long longer but yeah. i'm still thinking yeah but the way this whole system over here works is just so much against no not against so much different to the way i'm used to working yeah and i just thought to you it's amazing the brainwashing that happens you've only got to get a few influences to say this is so much. even got me looking oh i wonder why this is so much better and yeah, it's, I looked into the latest version of it and I thought, yeah, these are all cool, but I wouldn't, wouldn't say this isn't enough for me to say lose a month of time. Trying so I think they're going to lose a month yeah, to learn it, it the way that I know the program I'm using. If and I don't want to mention programs. So I don't dish anyone. So it's, but it's just anybody who's in the video might guess might what I'm talking about. But yeah, it was just really... It, Interesting. It was just funny that... Yes. So yeah, on the weekends, it was quite... It was novels that... I was thinking, why is this drift happening? And I thought, oh, oh this is why the mighty dollar. <laughs> that's 
funny. It's amazing what, what else? happens to the main mighty dollar. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Did, no, I was going to say, what else did you learn on the weekend? What else to learn? Some shortcuts. Oh, yes. I heard you talking about those today. So like some final cut shortcuts. Final cut shortcuts. Um, I did. I did learn something else. And I have got as a topic to talk about, so I might as well talk about it now. Okay. Go straight into it. Or do you, have you got something you want to butt in with? No, I'm not going to butt in there. No. That's right. <laughs> so everyone knows I love my black and whites. Really? Really. You don't say. I would never have guessed. Why would everyone know that? For what reason? <laughs> Even when there's a colour picture, I still tend to flick it to black and white and go, mm, I think I like it more in black and white. I don't know. It just, for me... I see this. I see the subject when there's colour in there. Go, oh, look at the nice greens. Look yeah. at the nice toning. Look at like colour toning. I'm looking at. I'm seeing that, which it's not like I don't enjoy. But for me personally, I rather draw them into the eyes of the model or to the model, yeah. and the colouring which is taking away from the modelling, the model, sorry, is normally, but and it's timeless. And it's timeless. And just, by the way, for everyone, that is the elusive answer as to why Peter shoots in black and white, because you get asked that so many times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, that's why. <laughs> yeah, well, you just never know when it was taken. It's taken. And it, like you said, it, the colour doesn't distract you. That And then I, I watched that movie I told you about, which yeah. I've been meaning, I've heard good reports, and I've been meaning and meaning to watch it. And there was another, sorry, I'm going around in circles. There was <laughs> another movie that you actually knew who were the two actors in it, another black and white movie recently. And all they did was argue for two and a half oh, I knew hours the, straight. I know the ma- I know the ga- girl, Zendaya. Zendaya, She's yeah. in Euphoria. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but so the, I watched that movie and the cinematography is nice, but the the continual arguing you just didn't like. warm, warm me out. I don't want to just sit and watch two people argue. That's, we'll leave that for me to watch. Yeah, I'll leave, <laughs> yeah watch Kardashians. Um, but in fact, although then the movie I watched, there was a lot of arguing, but um, it was... What's a arguing movie? Um, the Lighthouse. And yeah. I'd heard great reviews about it and I'd been researching a little bit on cinematography and a certain look I was trying to do on your video. Um, distractive way. I've gone way off, Mark. You're going all over the shop. All right, so yeah, I don't know how You've to get back. I've got back brain. I've got back brain. <laughs> I don't know how to get back because the reason I was talking about... All right, I'll go into Lighthouse at the end of this. Okay. But anyway, the reason I found Lighthouse was because I was getting into doing the grading and that onto your video. My video, yeah. Because it was shot in a log, so it was very, very flat. And even though I liked the milkiness of the log, it was just... I know that any video grader out there is going, oh, you're lazy, you just left it in a log or something. But So I started playing around with logs and I had a couple that I'd made and I had a couple that I bought and there's some that's into the system. And then I started deciding, no, I'm just going to do this myself and put all my style into it. And then a quick YouTube here and there later just to double, to find out, oh, how do I get that skin tone line again? Oh, mm. that button. So little minor things which got me on to, um, that's why I got onto Lightroom because these other lighthouse because right. these other things distracted me. But when I got back in, I was finished grading it all, and I'm just going, and I flicked it to black and white, and I flicked it back to color. I like my motion in color and the stills in black and white. Okay. So I don't know why, but. I, I looked at a few different things I played around with and everything I played around with that was motion, mm. even though I've liked some of the motion I've done in black and white, when I did it in colour, unless it's a film noir type of thing, I really, really digged what I could do with having colour shifts mm. during and things like that. That's so interesting. I don't, I'm going to play more with this. It might, it might be that on colour video <laughs> and black and white. <laughs> Um, Very random. But then coming back onto the lighthouse, yeah. <coughs> if it is a heavy story, uh, it is extremely heavy. Mm. It's very deep. Um, gets a little bit annoying. But the cinematography is just <laughs> to die for. I've just the way the uh, director of photography and that have done and the director have put it together. It's just. Where there's harsh light, there's just strong contrast. Where there's soft muted light, there's no contrast. And where they've used the light to enhance the scene, but everything's lit. The room is lit for 
for how the room is lit. And then when they move around the room, they don't relight it because they just, it they just the leave it as hmm. a, like a real room is. If it's just yeah. a candle light, that's all it's lighting that room. That's it. Like, does, yeah, it doesn't get brighter when you go over. Yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. So if you really want to see some amazing cinematography, and it's in square, by the way. So the actual whole movie's in square. Old school. Which at first bothered me a little bit, but mm-hmm. I love square for photography. Yeah. But then I got got used to it and it sort of kept you into the boundaries of the movie, which I liked. You didn't distract into the landscapes of the movie. You, mm-hmm. It kept you on. So I thought that was a very clever guy, but. Just watching that then, because watching it reminded me of Citizen Kane, mm-hmm. which is a very famous movie. I, I haven't seen it for a long time. I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Well, I quickly jumped on, and when I did type on it on YouTube, I came up with a couple of cinematographers talking about it, and then I saw them and Citizen Kane's on my list to watch this coming weekend, <laughs> even though I've seen it. Mm-hmm. Now, so I it just again. I need to refresh me. I think... And it's a much older movie, but I think the cinematographer sees what I saw and what I remember is even better. Yeah. And this is a long time ago. It's just the ability of having someone in a window outside and someone in here, mm. but you both of them are in shot, both of them are sharp, and the story is going between the two, so you can watch one story or the other it story. That's cool. It, yeah, it's really cool. But that was my big learnings for the weekend That's that cool. I've still decided I love Black like <laughs> even though you hate my green thumbnail I did of you. It was a bit green. It was a bit green. I well, like it. I think the movie I watched over the weekend was in stark contrast to that. It was very highly saturated, set in Hollywood. It was not very deep at all. It was a bit stupid. It was by no means a good movie, but I enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. Eminem. No, it was. It didn't have Marshall Mathers in it. It had Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox. Yeah, Eminem, Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox. You're going to confuse people. It was a good movie, though. I I mean, it's not like... It's by no means... It's not a good movie. It's not a good movie, but I enjoyed it. It was really... But I didn't go in thinking it was going to be fantastic, like, A-grade cinema. I went into it knowing this is going to be stupid, and it was stupid. So if you take it for what it is, and it's stupid, and it's got bad acting, and it's a dumb storyline... And it's just a bunch of friends, like, because it's all like their clique and stuff. It's just a bunch of mates making a stupid movie I together. I don't have a problem with it's that. It's fine for that, but like, they've got these really horrible reviews because I think everyone expected, like, they went into it expecting, like, the lighthouse and then they got Good Morning. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you just it's go into Good it. Good Morning Vietnam. No, it's called Good Morning with a U. Oh. <laughs> but if they haven't seen Good Morning, they don't know what they're going to get. Is, is it more like watching Jackass? Uh, no, it's a bit more like, like Cheech and Chong kind of stupid, like that kind of level of stupid. Like I love Cheech and Chong. It's like that level of like stoner comedy stupid stuff. Maybe like, I need to watch it. It's, if you think it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty dumb. Anyway, it was just totally different to what you watched. One of my favourite movies, Cheech and Chong's next movie. Really? Yeah, that's interesting. That one where he sings my Sharona, but he changes the word from Sharona to scrotum. Oh my God. <laughs> While he's driving down the road in a VW full of smoke. Well, maybe you would like to say it because it's that level of stupid. I might have to look at it. It's pretty good. <laughs> no, anyway. I think I might have grown out of Cheech and Chong a bit. That was like when I was eight, 17, 18. <laughs> what, like a few years ago? You're only 20, no, aren't you? In, in, I thought you said I'm a 12-year-old. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you haven't turned 18 yet. <laughs> still mentally 12. Well, that's good. It's always good to learn stuff. Like, I think I I say that, I think I say that every day at work. Oh, I learned something new today. You were always teaching me new things. I don't know. So what did I learn? I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do always. Even if it's just something stupid, like I'll just be curious about something and just ask you a random question, you always seem to have an answer for me. But then you go and check up to see if I lied to you or not. Because sometimes you do. I don't. It's just I was under the belief of something <laughs> yeah, different. So you the lie. person who told me he was wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, I do that sometimes. I like to do my little double check. Well, just because I don't want to then go repeat it to someone else and then I sound stupid. So you got to make sure. So you're just are you happy if I sound stupid? No, I don't want you to sound stupid either. Oh. I remember I did it recently with you. There was something that you were saying constantly to people on workshops and I yeah, had you checked it out and it was wrong. Yeah. So you were I like, okay. I don't know why. I don't know who told me Yeah. That. I don't either. But it's good. At least now you know, so you stop saying that. Except I can't remember what we were talking about. Uh, it was, you said that, I can't say his name. I don't say his name. Sorry. 
a story. What? No, no, no. The, no, no. The name of like the photographer who was yeah. dating Elle McPherson. Oh yeah. And you said that yeah, he yeah, named the, Elle magazine yeah. after her, but that wasn't true. Yeah. Yeah. So you were like, okay, I'll stop telling people that then. <laughs> yeah, I think I did a check, and it's actually, it was a rumor. Yeah. It wasn't truth. It was a rumor. So there you go. There you go. So you'll stop telling people that. Well, I, ha- I have stopped. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Second, you told me that. Yeah, I you were like, well, game end of that. <laughs> but I think he's still. And we're talking about Gilly Spencerman. I think he's still the art director or the head of photography of Elle Might Magazine. Be. And he did d- date or marry Elle McPherson. He did. Yeah, that yeah. was that's not true, but uh, the magazine wasn't. Maybe named after he her. bought Elle Mag- a magazine for Elle McPherson. I don't know, but it wasn't named after her. Yeah, was the moral of that the story. The moral of that story. That moral of that story. And she's been sticking her head up a little bit lately. Her Has she? Giselle. Oh. I've seen a few pictures of that coming up. Cool. Recent it's times. so good that like older supermodels are still modeling. Like, well, there is no new models. There is a few, but they're like icons. But though there is, it is. Well, actually, this is the one thing I was going to talk about is because I get asked a lot: is how do we find models? So while we do have, I normally find them fairly obnoxious and a little bit. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I oh, didn't mean that sort of find. No, <laughs> uh, we do have an in-depth tutorial about this on Inspire. We filmed not too long. I think we had a, we had an older one of how we find models, but then the world kind of changed. So when we did a new one with me and you, and it's pretty like we go through, I think we bring up Instagram. When we, it up? Yeah, we go That's and right. we bring up and we, we right. literally like show people what we oh, do. Oh, what we do, right. Like, cause you, and you get me to take over and stuff. So if you do like want to see the rabbit hole, but essentially I go through just a rabbit hole and I just get lost in there. Like I'll start on like maybe a model we've already worked with and I'll find them to be really cool. So I'll be checking out their page and then I'll see another shoot they've done and be like, oh, that's really cool. Who took this? And then I'll go through the photographer's page and then look at, oh, who's this model they work with? And I'll just rabbit hole and rabbit hole. And that's just how I, I don't know, I just rabbit hole through the internet. I mean, we when we're traveling, there's always agencies, but I find Melbourne's hard because Melbourne is, I feel like the network here is a bit small. Whereas well, I feel like that we we used to have a fashion industry. Here yeah, and we, we don't, don't anymore. really. Yeah, so I so, find it a bit harder here. But overseas, there's so many agencies to hit up and stuff, and I find it a bit easier overseas, if anything. Yeah, I, it's the problem is is a type of models I wanted proper fashion models, mm. like the '90s models. Totally, and that's e-commerce. hard to find in Melbourne. Yeah, e-commerce has killed that. So there's plenty of models in Melbourne, but they're all doing e-commerce, which is the Macarena, mm. change clothes, you know, give us 30 poses in 30 seconds and yeah. change and do that all day long. And that's 180 degrees, the opposite to the way to I want to work. Yeah. And the agencies aren't looking for my, my style of portraiture or beautiful eyes and things because they're not selling the model's face, they're selling their body fits this dress perfectly. Exactly. Um, and... The the models, even though they really want new great shots, they don't see. They see their clients just want this. Like they're they more happy to do iPhone a human photos. Mannequin. They want human. They're happy to do iPhone photos when they just sing and pick yeah. up somebody giving them a couple of hundred bucks for posting that picture of wearing that. Yeah. Than having a picture of them looking what they really should be having as a mm. send. Um, the high-end people who pay big lots of money and allow you to model for the rest of your life don't see what you really are capable of doing. Mm. Yeah, and I, I find that's one of the harder things when I am trying to find models for you to work with is trying to find someone who can give different eyes because I know that's what you're really after is, like, expressive eyes. You don't want dead eyes, so trying to look for someone that's got and sometimes I don't even see it. Like sometimes I show you someone and I'm like, what do you think of this model? And I think they're going to be fantastic. And you're like, eyes are dead. I'm like, really? Like, yeah, I don't see normal, that. Those ones are normally, that girl looks really cool. I like her. She's one of best friends. I don't see, like, <laughs> I don't see dead eyes. Like, And then and other people I'm like, oh, no. Nah. And then you're like, no, those eyes are amazing. So uh, maybe I just don't see it. Some, but sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Yeah, that's. But that's, yeah, like, I guess that's kind of how I, like, because I, I don't know, I just get asked it a lot for some, I guess other photographers ask me 
because I know I do a lot of the scouting for you. So they want to know themselves how they can find models to work with. So it's just a lot of well, it's trolling through like so many. Well, it's got hard for you. I'd say in the last four years, it's got so much harder. Mm. Like it was really easy yeah. to find good model, like models that I could easily fill up a f- full day without a problem. Mm. Whereas now I'm finding it much harder because uh, even like even the sort of the promo model, you know, the grid gar- girls and all of those who used to love doing that, and mm. unfortunately the feminists took it tooking took. took wo- <laughs> Took work away from women that we like. Mm. Some of the women that um, the models I know that did all that type of stuff were devastated that they've just taken my income off me. I loved doing this. I never felt like yeah. a piece of meat. This was my five minutes of fame. But because one certain group saw, saw that, that as, as the, these girls being, being treated like a piece of meat, meat. with this, like the, the girls who were doing that, I never said I never felt like that. They actually loved it. Yeah. So unfair. Yeah, so um, they were, were trying to go a step further when it first started because Naomi Campbell jumped on in the UK and just yelled. Because they were talking about right through fashion, mm-hmm. and Naomi Gosh. Campbell got up on her high horse and really Good ripped them. And a lot of the couple that were, Naomi. yeah, I love Naomi. <laughs> she she basically she was, she was pretty full on. She basically says, "Just because you'll never be a model, you don't want any of us to be a model." <laughs> Is this your way of payback? She's so cutthroat. I love she her. She's very cutthroat. I love her attitude. Love her attitude. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty cool. But it was just the amount of women that what needed a new folio or needed needed fresh pictures on there so they had a chance of picking up these gigs, which were fully paid gigs. Mm. And then when they were there, this was their chance of being Being neat. seen. Oh, but meeting super famous people, right. directors, and they're getting seen on TV cameras and all of that. And we know Caroline in... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's still doing it with Monster. Yeah. And if you were sent to her, I'll take Monster off you, she oh, would be, she would probably punch me in the face. Yeah. But because, not really because she's so lovely. Yeah. But, <laughs> but no, but that is her life. She <laughs> totally. absolutely, She gets to travel the world. Yeah. She gets paid really good money. She and gets she, to feel hot. She f- gets to feel – she's feeling good for her. Exactly. You'll never change the sleazy guy comment. No, but if she If she wasn't wearing good. what she – she'd get, still get that comment. Uh, yeah, because she's dropped in gorgeous. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> what I mean, it's not like degrading her. No, it's not at all. She Because it, she feels good. Now she gets good. paid for that sleazy comment where she didn't get paid, paid for it before. before. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That, that's. I think that's changed a lot. But I, I don't know. I, I find it a little bit in the world that – People get a bit jealous of people being able to achieve something, so I want to try and shut that down a bit, mm. like cut that out. Jealousy is a horrible thing. It's curable, you told me. <laughs> no, it's not. I don't it know is. what it is. It is curable. Okay. If they feel good about themselves, they've got yeah, nothing to be jealous about. That's true. That is true. I think it's, yeah. it's really important that if you find that you're getting jealous, it means it's you're like, well, what missing am I, something Yeah, what am I missing life? in my life? What do I need to change yeah, about if, me so I yeah, not feel, feel like this? Yeah, why, why? Because as much of us know, the, you know, the grass is green over the other fence, so you jump over it and it's just as many patches, if not worse. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's that thing, why waste your time looking what others are doing anyway? Just look at what you're, you're, you're doing. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Yeah, no, it's like if I don't know if I feel jealous about anything, really. Like, I don't know if I see someone's got, like, some really cool outfit and I'm like, damn it, man, wish I had that and get all jealous. I'm like, mm. go on the internet and look and be like, oh, this is my own cool little outfit. I'm like, yeah, not so jealous anymore because well, I've got my own cool You might go up and ask them, where did you buy that from? Yeah. You're not going to go there and stick chewing gum on it when they're not looking just no, to pay No, exactly. <laughs> I'd be, I, like, I might just go buy, like, find out where they got it, buy myself that or buy myself something equally as cool or do something nice for myself just to... Counteract. I don't know. Counteract your jealousy. I don't get jealous very often. Really? Not that often. Not that often. Well, I said not really. <laughs> yeah, something like I don't get. I sometimes oh. get. No, I don't really. What's it? A finger under the table. No, She's going to no, stop me. No. no. I don't oh, really. when someone is laying on the beach in the Maldives and you've never been there, you don't get jealous of that. Maybe. Not at the person, <laughs> the experience. Maybe. <laughs> uh, someone driving a 488 Ferrari just in the colours that you want. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 You don't know where to park it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, no. Well, actually, I have a car spot now. 
Ja, ich habe kein Passwort. Nein, ich habe Passwort. Ja, drei Stau. Nein, in Australia, ich habe gesagt, ah ja, es ist immer ein Stau. Es gibt keine Gäste parken. So, up for the grabs. Well, he's gone anyway, now, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, cool. It's no man's land. It's mine now. It's mine now. I actually refer to it as my parking spot now. Has <laughs> someone moved in there? The actual flat? It's like, it's not even next to anyone else. I else's. know, but what, the flat oh, that yeah. Sun claimed it. Yeah. So someone used in there. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, so they didn't spot. even know the set flat. No, because I park there now, so now everyone just So you're going to put a sign up there, big spot? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe a nice big neon sign. Oh, the glitters. Yeah, that'd be cool as. I want to get a neon sign for my lounge room, actually. For your lounge room? Yeah, there's a little um, store. So if you go back in now, deleted things, there's somebody who offered us deleted sign if we put it up behind us in our... Really? Yeah, and I <laughs> there was again, no. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> damn. And he said, well, just if you don't want it for that, any of that. Oh, I want to put it in my lounge room. We'll just send you one. I said, no, I'm not interested. Oh, I am. Of course you are. I want one for my lounge room. A neon sign. Yeah. I'm going to get it to say live, laugh, live, laugh, sesh. (laughs) (laughs) Instead of live, laugh, love. Like, you know, because like. (laughs) So you're going to put it into your doof tent and take it away with you too? Maybe. Oh, no, I don't have power out out of doof. Yeah, those little batteries and that little thing. Like yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Gosh. Hmm. 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 Unfortunately. Unfortunately. So what's the answer to finding models then? You haven't still answered the question. So I know, I know that we've got our own little tricks of, like, my rabbit hole's a bit different to yours. Mine's yeah. normally more in the commercial world. Yeah. I'll see something in a magazine... And I'll go down the rabbit hole. It's normally through the hair and makeup artists that I find my I do. Best I use that one sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I just start just clicking around and looking at who did this and who did that. And I just, I could, God, I could, I think I've sometimes spent hours doing it. Sometimes you I got just noticed. Yeah, I just like, <laughs> but sometimes I get a bit desperate and I'm like, oh no, that sounds bad. I don't want to say I'm desperate, but sometimes I am like, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, I really need to find some new models for Peter to work with or like. Or for a project or for, or for workshops. Yeah, for anything. Well, yeah, I was about to say workshops and that and, or even for clients and stuff if I'm like, oh, we really need stuff. So I just, sometimes I waste ages just going down rabbit holes. But yeah, the hardest thing is just looking for. I don't know, it just takes time. Like, it really just takes time. And it's hard to it's hard to answer that question, like, how do I find them? It's just rabbit holes through the internet. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, so we had someone this week asked as well, mm-hmm. didn't we? Yep, I get asked a lot. And I just, yeah, rabbit hole. Or I, or I get lovely people to do my job for me. <laughs> hey, who you, do you Jess. know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, who do you know? See you soon, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> who do you know? Who do you know? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky. One, yes. But it's also so it's kind of fun part of my job as well. I get to look at beautiful people. <laughs> Just going yeah. through looking at pretty people. Your favourite part of your job is looking at places to stay. Oh, that one's fun as well. And that's stressful, actually. Booking accommodation stresses me out a bit. Because I don't know what it's going to look like in real life. Right, looking for islands to shoot at. Yeah, that's fun. That was fun. <laughs> oh, so then, it was, then it got hard because then I was like, all these places look nice. How do I pick which one? It was like when I was booking New York accommodation. I was like, all of these look fine. Like They better be good. I hope so. Oh, no. Don't stress me out. You're going to give me wrinkles. I'm going to need Botox. I'll give you more wrinkles, you mean? No, I don't. Stop. I don't should get stop. some Botox. I haven't, I haven't got... No, I need to wait till I'm 30 to get Botox. I've got until January. You don't need Botox. Don't okay. you dare. Why? Because you don't have any creases in your head. What if I just want to freeze this? No, because it'll be frozen in an ugly look. I don't want one. <laughs> At least if it moves, I get ugly and pretty. But if you freeze it and it's in an ugly state, I'm stuck with that forever. I can't even go, just drift. It'll just be... <laughs> oh, maybe. I'm... Maybe not. It doesn't last. It costs a lot of money. It does scarring. Oh, you're if just you went born with it, pay for it. 
<laughs> you're just thinking another 50 <laughs> years old come up with a digital enhancement that we can just dial in what we want so it doesn't matter what do i do to my oh, face now that would be so convenient no it wouldn't yes. everyone would walk around with the ugliest faces in the world no. look at all of the people on botch that think they have amazing face but they just want to extend their nose another foot or their triple z boobs <laughs> aren't big enough or their lips just need a little bit more so a semi-trailer can drive through them. Hey, at least I've calmed down with lips. Yeah, well, that's because they never went down. <laughs> well, it's not like I've kept getting them. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh. No, there is a filter on Instagram I like. And I'm like, I wish I could just, like, put that on. I wish my face just looked like this filter. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm the worst. Like, whenever, especially, like, when model, like, when... Like I'm being mother hen and models come in and they start talking about, oh, I want to get this done. I want to get, I'm like, just do it, babe. Just go for it. <laughs> just. I, know, I changed a long time ago. I was a hundred percent dead against it. Mm. Then I heard another story about people manipulating photos. And I thought, you know, that happens in the fashion industry all the time. And then the, the discussion was on talk radio or something. The discussion was going down the line. All of a sudden she turned around and said, well, for us who have money, we can have it permanently done. Yeah, it's Photoshop in real life. Photoshop in real life. And those people who don't have the money have to do that to have the look they want. In a photo, yeah. Cool. Which one of us is right or wrong? But a lot of the time the Photoshop, especially with the work I was doing, it wasn't the model asking for the photo uh, yeah. It was the client. Right? And, yeah. So you're looking to try and sell something. Uh, now we need the skin a little bit more cleaner. Yeah, can she's got a slightly crooked nose. Can you straight it? Can size a bit? And the list of retouch on some of those were just, why did you even book that model if I'm changing every single thing about her? And we're seeing other people, we just think, that doesn't even look like her. Like, we know the model and then we saw this commercial campaign. And go, that doesn't even look like her. Yeah. Now, I remember uh, an Australian photographer mentioned something. He walked past a billboard mm. and got and said, oh, I actually shot that. I don't know. think I've ever worked with that model, though. And that was his exact... Oh, my God. <laughs> he was a very big name photographer. I'm not going to mention his name, but mm. it was... Well, that's actually funny. Speaking of that is another thing I do when I'm searching for models is go to their tagged photos and... Like, I mean, sometimes they've got their tagged photos heavily monitored, but like, I'll try and find a friend and then go to the friend's profile and see if the friend has posted a photo of said potential model because the friend's not going to retouch a photo of them. Because well, if anything, the friend's going to retouch herself and leave the yeah, other person not, flat so she stands out. Although, you know, I have heard of people who do retouch their friends in group photos and I'm like, that's rude. <laughs> like, do you? No. But you'll retouch yourself and leave them looking ugly. No, because I don't look ugly because my friends are beautiful. But they don't think you look ugly. But I do. <laughs> yeah, this is getting back to this little discussion we had with a model earlier this week. Exact same thing. Yeah, I know. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, so I do that because I – people – People do edit themselves. So if you want to see what the person actually edit looks themselves. like, try and find their friend and their friend will post what they actually look like. Won't be what their friend actually looks like, but it'll be what they actually look like. Yeah, well, that's, I think I told you that in the yeah. early days is try and find, yeah, just try and find their friends and then look at their pictures and if it looks like them. Or the other thing is video. Video, of course. Yeah, if, even though there is some now YouTube, oh, sorry, not YouTube, Instagram filters for mm. video which yeah. still flatten skin out and do things like that we see everyone on youtube can see what i really look like but they won't be able to go to my friend's instagram because i don't have any of those instagrams no. <laughs> <laughs> joking i have lots of friends and they're all amazing and i love them <laughs> doing one of those self-deprecating jokes that i do i was waiting for you to make that joke to be honest but i thought i'd get in before you no, did. no i didn't want to upset you because i know you're very touchy about how few friends you actually have anymore. i know i have lots <laughs> of friends <laughs> even though they no. didn't come to my house party when i got back from europe that i invited them all to and no one came or one person came over 
It's okay. They all forgot. Well, you shouldn't lift a trillion miles from anybody. Yeah, well, that. And also, they all forgot because I made it, like... Yeah, it was most of a freezing cold night as well. No, it was because I made made the event two weeks before we went to Europe, and then we were away for seven weeks. I never reminded anybody. (laughs) So, you got all upset because you didn't even do your own job on your own. (laughs) So, they all forgot. And I was sitting at home with my bottles of spirits. I went, who's coming? And no one came. It's tragic. Did my son go? No. Oh, so even he dumped you. That's pretty bad if you got dumped by my son. <laughs> it's all right. I got I got drunk with my boyfriend and my one friend that came over. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> we, back on what you yeah. were saying, mm-hmm. this was something that I was actually going to bring up and you've just segued me straight into it without me even knowing what you're going to do. I'll segue those little things that you write. Sorry? Segways, those little, like, things that you ride that have, like, the wheels. Oh, yeah, I yeah. think But I don't really say ride. it's a Segway when... No, it is. I just, it just reminded me of that thing, and I really want to ride one of those one time. Yeah. Oh, that's from Cop, Mall Cop or something. Yeah, those things. Uh, I'd rather kill myself on the scooter. <laughs> anyway, um, Segway. Anyway, Segway. Um, <laughs> so I said to you today, because I've, I've had a blog running for a long time, mm-hmm. and I predominantly was using the blog for stuff that I couldn't post on social media. And more my real work, but stuff that just wasn't social media friendly. And I don't like putting bars or blurring. And it was always labeled not safe for workplace, so people mm-hmm. wouldn't get fired if they looked at my blog. But then I haven't been doing, I haven't been working in the fashion industry that much because there's no industry in Melbourne. <laughs> I keep going on about this. Mm. We're starting our own though. Bex, Bex creating a fashion label and she's going to employ me to shoot amazing shoots. So cool. Can you get on to that? Sure. There's a sewing machine somewhere mm-hmm. in here. Anyway, okay. so <laughs> I started, I don't know, I got in my head. And I think it might have been because I look at I, there's a few people that like Helmut Newton and Peter Lindbergh that really didn't like retouching a lot of stuff, but still all the stuff that went in magazine or high end magazine had definitely been retouched. Some of it was made not to look retouched, so they're very careful how they read, but they still retouched it. And Helmut Newton because it's pre digital. But then all so I so Couldn't you actually it. retouch stuff that wasn't digital? Like could they retouch back then? Yeah, airbrushing. You would have heard of airbrushing. Yeah, and Yeah, but I didn't really And they, they painted, they airbrushed and they dodged and burned. Oh. Remember that picture I showed you of Which the circles one? of dodging and burning? Yeah, but I didn't know they could like retouch like skin. Yeah, it's called airbrushing. Oh. Oh. Anyway. I thought that was just oh. like with makeup. No, that makeup. Yeah, no, that they never did that before. Yeah, that started way after airbrushing in photography. I have learnt something new today. <laughs> Just remember it so you can tell Jared. Okay. <laughs> so I and I, st- I still believe you should have the essence of photography. Your, your photography should be out of camera. Mm-hmm. So the picture that you're trying to capture should be, and then you can build on it, unless you call yourself a digital artist. Yeah. And then you can do whatever if you, you like. Because if you're, you're a photographer. A digital, yeah, it should, you should be. A, it you should be, a, still, be a, yeah. You can still be a digital artist. Totally. You took the, all the photos yourself, but then you manipulate them all. There's some amazing works that have been done like that, which are really clever, and there's a, just as much skill into having the story in their head than collect all the bits and pieces the yeah. easiest way to manipulate them into one picture. Um, so I, I've never had a problem with art to art and I don't think there's any rules, but for some reason I started putting this boundary on me. Like I've been trying to retouch less and less, but that's because I just, now that I'm trying to get out of, well, not trying, now that I've got out of having to work for other people, I only do what I want to do. I don't have to retouch to other people's level. And I actually mm-hmm. gone back and retouched a couple of my photos. Like ones that you already did and you've yeah, like redone pulled, them? Yeah, pulled sliders back Yeah. to how I'd actually prefer That's if cool. it was me, not somebody else telling me what they wanted. And I got caught up with this, uh, this purist type of idea. Elitist. I don't know why. Because there it says, there's, there's, is the purist, and a lot of street photographers are purists like that. Oh, like it can't be like edited at all. 
Well, not in a nasty way, but it's like that famous nanny, you know, none of that was edited. Everyone's oh, seeing it. Oh, yeah, that one, the documentary. Just as I was shot. And um, there's lots of... What was that called? That was a really good doco. It was a really good doco. You'll have to look it up and leave a link. But it's a, it's a really good doco. And it's like a really sad story, but it's not. Because if she was famous, she might, mightn't have been able to do what she was doing. And Bill Cunning... You know, I'm going to mess this up. Another amazing fashion street photographer that would just go, all right, today stripes. He'd go out on his little bike, he'd ride in, in, he's in New York, and walk out and he'd just sit there and wait for stripes and take photos of stripes all day. The next day might be heels, the next day might be shoes, cigars, he'd pick a topic. That's cool, that's cool. And he had, um, I think it was New York Times, Vogue, all companies. And he was living in a box in a warehouse. He's, if you saw where he was living, Random. it was really, he, but he did it for the passion of his photography. And uh, that stuff was never retouched. Mm-hmm. That was all, to, he, was, he was capturing snapshots of time. So in, down my rabbit hole, I um, started to decide, well, I'm not doing much of my uh, work for magazines that so I haven't got the problem with social media and being friendly for them. So I want to keep my blog going. So I decided well, there's lots of shoots we do where people only see the one finished shot or one or two. Why don't I just stick it straight out of camera or out of raw, just get turn it to black and white and yeah. just maybe a bit of contrast, something like that. And I've done one, two, three posts recently like that. And when I was doing the latest one of Rara, I sort of thought, why am I doing this? Why? Because this isn't, even when I was taking the photo, it was never taken to be that raw. Yeah. Because of a couple of pimples on Rara's head, I'd rather have taken off because it's not her fault that on the day of the photo shoot, Mm. They were there. I started looking into it and it's a little bit like that thing we were talking about in a previous podcast where I've decided to do some post-production pre to shooting uh, yeah. where I'm doing some lighting work before I shoot in Lightroom mm-hmm. and then shooting to that look. So because there's stuff I couldn't do with real lights. There's no way I could get it or there might be be a way, but, but it's just easier. the model wouldn't be able to move. Yeah. Whereas this way, the model can move. Can move, and I can just move it. a couple yeah. of those things a little bit. And I was thinking about that, and then I thought, if this is done, because I'd, I had someone previously, like a couple of years ago, sort of raving about back in my day, and then <laughs> I mentioned dodging and burning, mm. and he goes, I hardly made any change. But then I remember looking up Ansel Evans and quite a few of those photographers and they had the dodging burning diagrams. You saw it. There were circles everywhere with plus two, minus six, and all these numbers or they were just like 11, 12, 12, 6. They were the the EVs they wanted applied to those areas and it showed the befores and afters. And there was a massive difference to those images. Mm. And then there was a Helmut Newton documentary I saw where Helmut Newton was in with the printer, the person who's printing. He's got a Stanley knife and he's just slicing down through the prints he didn't like the dodging and burning that was done. Oh my God. Just slicing them up so they could never be sold. You see, he was very protective about his work. Um, so things like that and sort of opened up my mind. Why am I why are you doing this? Why am I just why am I starting to do things other people putting myself in a position where that's not what I want to create. Yeah. I'm not a street shooter. I don't want to be a street shooter. And you don't like over retouch. Like as much as I love the way you used to retouch in 2015. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't have looked now, would you? <laughs> but I feel like back in 2000, like, I, but it's so funny because I remember looking through your photos, no, like looking through all of your photos and noticing like, why are the photos around like 2014, 15? Why do they look different to now? And you were a lot heavier with your retouching oh, yeah, there. But, but I love that look. But that's a me thing. Whereas you don't like that look. I want to so, see skin. So you still you still do some retouching, but you keep it looking a lot more natural. Whereas it used to be a little bit more plasticky back then. But I like that look. Oh no, a lot plasticker. The dodging and burning. I'd spend. I could spend up to an hour micro dodging and burning your face to make it flawless. Can you do that so on my photos you, moving forward? When you that's zoom in. Mm-hmm. You can still see every hair and every pore. But it was just... But it was just yeah. You can do that on my photos no. moving forward. Thank you. That's right. You can pay my hourly rate, except I don't work commercially, so you'll have to find somebody else. Damn it. 
So but yeah, back it's, on that, it's, yeah. and I don't know why I keep doing this. So when I did Tessa's edit last night, I said, no, I'm going to edit this. I'm not going to put rules on myself. I'm trying to create an image that I love. Mm-hmm. And right this minute, I love her pose. I like her look. The lighting's all right, but it's very limited. But she's not popping how I need her to pop. And I started right at the raw. And as soon as I started manipulating at the raw, I already knew this is where I need to go. So I then continued my retouching through raw and then into Photoshop to get that feel through. And if I just turn on and off my Photoshop, there's a change, but no massive change. If I just turn on and off my raw work, mm. there's a, a bigger change in the overall feel of the lighting. So I might, did some dodging and burning in it. That was just to pull that white wall down a bit darker and her dark hair up a little bit. But the essence of the photo was still the same. But when I saw my raw popped a bit better, that gave me such a better feel to finish it in Photoshop. Whereas if it was flat, I would have come in with a different feel into Photoshop. Mm. So, and it's like we we did a shoot just before and I shot with three different cameras, the exact same thing. So three, four different, or three different cameras with four different looks. Three different cameras with three different looks plus one. All right, so the film camera was the same setting as oh. the third look. So basically it was the Hasselblad at my normal settings. Uh-huh. Then because I played around with my Lycra and was able to get my exact Hasselblad look, which I've never been able to do. Very cool and fancy. So in the way of my haloing and things like that, I was able to create it very quickly and uh-huh. very accurate to the how, in fact, better than what I could create with Focus, which I mean. Big call. I know because I've been so scared that my Hasselblads all die and I can never buy another one. Or oh, they're going to change focus and I didn't upgrade and I have to try and find an old computer to be able to run it for the rest of the life. But all of that, as, that's why I shot with the Leica and the Hasselblad today. Mm-hmm. Both with flash. First time I ever shot flash with my Leica, same settings. And I'm going to actually go in there and see if I can make just see side by side how close I can make these files because that just gets me much more comfortable with the future. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then I went to the natural light because we were using flash, but I decided to just not I'm use flash it, yeah. and went, went to my natural look. And then I want to see if I can get... The same like feel. Feel. Hmm. Where I'm now not using flashlight to get the look. I'm now going to use Lightroom to now make the background darker. Keep you light. You're so flancy. No, I'm just... But no, I get, <laughs> no, so, I get really so much more excited. And this is me being stupid. And this is everyone else should... Don't question why you're doing. Don't... Mm. And I started the last one talking a, a similar thing. I keep thinking doing these things are cheating, but none of it's cheating. No. At the end of the day, I'm creating an image. Exactly. However you get there is... However I get there, it doesn't matter. The image is what... I'm creating and mm. if it's me painting, photographing, screen printing. Yeah, still you're still creating something, it's still your art at the end of the day. day. And, and this is a little bit with the Richard Prince thing, even though all he did was change two things on a on a bit of text. If you look at it carefully and read his text, then look at the picture, the picture does have a different meaning. I don't wanna. I'm stubborn. I know you're stubborn. But it, <laughs> because of what he wrote, it does give a different meaning to the picture. Right. It's a little bit like my secret pictures that everybody doesn't know Your what that meaning is. Yeah. And when I tell them the meaning, they look at that yeah. picture so differently. Yeah. But I don't want to do that. But that was his way of taking somebody else's pictures and making them look the way he wanted them to be viewed. Right. But, uh, yeah, I know it's your thoughts on that. Yes. Well, yes. jumping back to what you were saying with your blog, though, so – you asked me before if you if I was happy. I think you asked me if I was happy with no, you. If, yeah, if you, I asked. Yeah, if you were happy, how did you feel about me going that way? And I was like, yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I mean, it's if fine. If you can Botox me, that's fine. <laughs> well, I mean, it's fine. It's up there. I don't hate the photos, but at the same time. You don't love them. I don't love them. Whereas I'm sure if 
they were a little bit more retouched, I might love them, but that's just me thing. But I've also then said these are pictures that I wouldn't spend 10 minutes retouching. Yeah, but then also, but then at the same, yeah, because at the same time so we... So it's not really, I shouldn't be putting them out to view except for people, photographers who want to see what mm. the roar was before I did anything. Well, because we weren't super wrapped with, like we liked no. the shoot, but we, both yeah. of us weren't super wrapped with it anyway. So you're not going to waste your time in something that we're not super wrapped in because... That, and when I looked looked at them, when I was culling all the stuff, I looked at them, I thought, these are really cool. This would yeah. really suit Oyster Magazine. Yeah. That's not my look. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I was looking through the wrong eyes. I'm, because it's meeting up with Shay and all of that stuff. I mean, Shay's more the oyster and the grungy, the mm. devis, you know, no Photoshop whatsoever, that sort of really rawness. I thought, yeah, these have got that rawness and not been retouched, not been anything. The only thing is yeah. a lot of that stuff's normally in colour and it's normally colour balanced to even make it feel more like a happy snap type picture. Yeah, which is like her complete style, style. which is it just feels like it is just like a... But that's her style, it's not my style. Yeah. Like I like that look, but that's not like what I... That's not my look for photography. Totally. So there's, there's plenty of photographers I love, but it's not my look. It's not something I never do, but I still appreciate looking at their yeah, photos like, yeah. because they, they, they know their look and they put their look out. But, yeah, so all I'm going to – I am going to – my blog's going to continue, but the difference is my blog's going to be now a little bit of feature work. Cool. So That's grab awesome. my favourite 10 pictures of Beck. Yeah, cool. My favourite 10 pictures of Abby just – Start in between, and but some now that I've got time, I'm going to be shooting some of my stuff, which is more for exhibition. All my my stuff stories. So you can put pop that in there. Pop as that. Well. And yeah. they, they can just fill in. Actually, I was lurking. I was lurking. Speaking of your blog, I was lurking it not too long ago. I was lurking. I love. I love going for a little bit of a lurk around the internet, and I kind of went back like pretty far. And you did a post like that, and I think it might have even been of Anne. And you said that, like, I can't remember how many years it was, but you're like, I've been working with Anne for this amount of years. And, like, here's a bunch of my favourite photos yeah, yeah. that we've taken over the time we've been working together. And I was like, that's really cool. So I like that for, like, I really like that idea for a blog. This, maybe you could do yeah, it. No, it's good. Uh, maybe so you could do it on so people's so birthdays. That'd be cute. On their but Well, I don't know when. Yeah, they're in your diary. I put them in there. Some are. Yeah, well, it's only a like, There's a lot that will come up in my Facebook. Oh, it's such and such birthday yesterday. You know what you can do? <laughs> on my birthday, you can do, my, it'll be my 30th birthday, you can do 30 photos of Beck. All right, 30 of the, uh, the dumbest <laughs> faces that Beck's pulled with my camera that you haven't seen. Am I allowed to do that? The 30 dumbest Beck faces. There would actually be some rippers because. There is some rippers. <laughs> you already know one of them. <laughs> I, actually, I low key want you to, but I don't. I also don't. Like, I don't there's a that. whole group. They're just gonna laugh from start to finish. Mm. They're not looking at. Well, these are actually you, but <laughs> that means it's on the internet forever. So oh, there's oh, there's already enough dumb photos of me out there. Oh. There's well, a few that I post all the time. But I, I think I put it on my close friends. <laughs> well, I started many years ago secretly. I decided no, this is wrong, and I've deleted. It. I've still got a couple of pictures in there. My F book. Your F book? Yeah, I was going to do a book called The F Book. Mm hmm. All effed up pictures. The, the, the oh. pictures you would never, and some of them, there's one of a commercial shoot, and it's a dad who had no idea to hold his newborn baby. <laughs> Literally had no idea to hold a baby. It looked like he was choking the baby to death. The baby was naked and it started pissing. So he's lifted his <laughs> arm out. Now it looks like he's wringing the baby's neck. And it's sort of like the picture is just to die for. But I could never show the world. <laughs> but I do, I would have, and the folder's hidden from Beck. It's not actually on a hard drive, on a drive <laughs> you have access to it. because you would go down a rabbit hole. But there is plenty of pictures that I've taken which are just so oh. bad, they're good. But I, it's even blinky shots. Owen Olaf did that whole series of blink, mm. which are literally. 182? Sorry? 182? No, not 182. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, Erwin Olaf, if you haven't heard an amazing photographer, Beck, cool. we'll, we'll put a link in the notes if you haven't found him. Um, he was extremely sick with influenza and all of a sudden he seems to last. I heard he's still alive, so hopefully he's still alive. But he's 
very heavy photoshopped even though i never knew that i thought it was amazing lighting and i found out later on it's very really really clean photoshopping hmm. we did a series called i think it was called blink and it was all these blinky shots and it's really funny there's was, was a youtube video i don't think i can find it so i'm not going to link it and it was an old guy going I don't get it. They're all, it's like they've blinked. <laughs> it's called <laughs> blink. <laughs> but it's like they're dumb photos, but that was so cool. Mm. Actually, we, have- we did a shoot last week and we were going through the photos and, and for some reason you just kept taking them when I was blinking and you were like, I love that. And I was like, no, that's how I look at 3 a.m. on a Saturday. Like... So, I still love and you were like, picture. but I love I, that. And I was like, no, like you can't use that. And you were like, but I love, and you just kept loving the blinky ones. And I was like, uh, blinky bell, blinky bell. I don't know. But I know you like that look, but anyway. Am I allowed to do one for me? What do you mean? A photo. Am I allowed to edit for me? Yeah, whatever. And put it in a book or something. Yeah, I whatever. On social. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, because there's it, there's a look. There's. There is a look I've seen. F- super famous models do that look. Yeah, I don't care. You can do whatever. Just you want. before you know they collapse in a coma or something. But no, <laughs> I don't care. You can do whatever. Just don't tag me. No, it's going to be in a book. How do you tag a book? <laughs> it's all good. I, I am doing. Going to start doing books. Finally. Finally, everyone's been asking for years. Although somebody was supposed to organise Finally. a calendar this year, you haven't done anything about it yet. I know. We're not happening, is it? I don't know. We run out of time. It needs to go to printers before we go to America. Well, it's probably not happening. <sighs> Why do I have too much pressure? Too much pressure. Anyway. anyway, we'll see you guys next week. Have a good one.